Welcome back to the program. You're watching Morning Thailand with Tulip and Golf. Now we're gonna go to a little more hard mm -hmm. news. But this story, we have been talking about this. I think every news station, every newspaper, mm -hmm. every media, a possible, very high profile case. Very that's high for sure. profile case because the guy is a very high profile businessman. Mm -hmm. And um, it started off the week with still missing, but now they found the body and just got confirmed identity yesterday mm. by fingerprint that it was him, Mr. Egayut. And mm -hmm. So yesterday, the police took um, the suspect, uh, Mr. Sandipap, to what's it called? Imitate the, yeah, situation, the situation that what was happened. So he started off since in Bangkok when they grabbed him from the restaurant, um, I think on the night of the 6th, and um, until the plan ends at Model Way is when Kun Ekayut finally got killed by strangulation from the shoestring. Shoestring, that's what they used? Yes, they said that's what they, mm. that's what he said they used. Mm -hmm. um, he said in, in between there, Mr. Egayut was handcuffed and he was also trying to flee. Um, he jumped off the car at one point when it slowed down and that's why uh, when he when the the suspects able to got Kun Ekayut back that's why they kind of fight and find and, and Mr. Ekayut finally got killed mm -hmm. because he was trying to flee before and um, Kun Sandipap didn't do this alone right no I think he has a he team. has accomplice mm -hmm. um there is another that the I one three an, uh, yes mm -hmm. All of them in custody except for one person that uh, Sandipap claimed is the one that used shoestring to kill Mr. Ekayud, which is, they call it Bum. Mm. So Bum is still missing. Yes, yeah. so Kipong um, Pim Pisan. Yes. Only 27. Uh, I don't know if the age can tell you <laughs> anything. That's true. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's very difficult to digest when you, th when one question comes to mind, what is the reason really that a person can kill another human being? That's true. I mean, how, how much does it take? Mm -hmm. And uh, I believe yesterday, the media tried to get interview with the relative of Mr. Ekyut, uh at the temple. Uh, right. right now, the body is at the temple. They will have a religious ceremony for seven days, but not cremated yet because they uh, will keep the body in case the forens uh, need any further forensic evidence. Mm -hmm. So they will keep the body uh, first. And uh, the relative actually said that um, they're pretty satisfying with what the police have done. At least they get the body of Ekayut back to perform religious ceremony yeah. and uh, when people, when the journalists ask, because people still skeptical whether mm -hmm. this is a scapegoat, whether they are more behind just right. this 5 million baht, the relative actually said that um, the thing is Mr. Sandipat is the gambler, addicted gambler and so in great debt. And I think this is also valid that anyone that addicted to gambling and they would try in, to do anything. And in mm -hmm. such a great debt, they can just do anything to just get money. And mm -hmm. um, Mr. Sandipat even said that they got two million baht. Uh, Mm. You know, to act out this plan, they spent three months planning all this thing. Wow. And they found the money, not all five million, they mm -hmm. found about 4.2 um, hiding in the plastic PVC pipe. Wow, so Kun Ekayut knows? Ek oh. You mean like the culprit? the money that the money that they stole from Mr. Ekayut so they put it has in a been pipe. found. It it was put in a pipe, but it's not the whole five million. They it was some four already. point two something left. Mm -hmm. And the parents of of Santipap, the drivers, also will be charged with uh, some kind of I don't know what exactly the charge call, but it's the conspiracy because they help him. Uh, 
hide the money oh. and know about him and they didn't notify the police. Right. So this thing is still in the middle of, you know, scrambling more details. Um, not, we not really get the full forensic report yet, but mm -hmm. so far it's confirmed it's him. It's confirmed that uh, the cause of death is lack of oxygen. Right, because it's strangled. Um, mm -hmm. Probably because of the strangle, there are some a lot of signs of struggling and fighting in the car. Mm -hmm. uh, one suspect missing. We will hear more about this, but it f pretty much almost every possible detail has been out there in the news and in the media. Mm -hmm. And it's probably a lot of people are looking at into this case, so they probably will have to provide us a little bit more information. We probably will hear. A complete detail, I think, by next week for sure, because you know over the weekends there's going to be a lot of questions coming up. Now, I'm um, giving you another update on another news on a supercar case. I mean, we have talked about this before about the whole trying to get away from taxes mm. and the whole fire that started this saga that has been ongoing. Saga. Yes, and it's <laughs> almost like a wish hunt now because all the rich people are just really scared if you have uh, one of those expensive cars. At this point, um, a lot of people will ask you, like the police will ask you to come in and the custom office uh, officials will ask you to come in and verify where did you get your car, how did it come about, S such and such. Now, the person who started this in the first place, or well not started this, but you know, that responsible for the all the six cars that got caught on fire, mm -hmm. um, at this point, Kun Tarit Pengdit, the DSI chief, has come out and said that um, the court has already given out the document saying that they can, they will arrest Kun Nati Ryu Tong or a man without arm. I guess he's um, amputated yeah, exactly. or somehow that's what they that's disabled. What, that's all, yeah, that's all they said in the news that um, I think one of his arm was missing. Okay. And he was the one that hired the driver to deliver all these six cars. Now they said that Kun Angun Jung Sangmani is the owner of the trailer that delivered all this car that somehow uh, got on, caught on fire in Sisake province. Now they said that um, the Kun Angun said that Nati is the one that hired her. Uh, they say that Angun was at the the scene, the crime scene where it was on fire, even before at the burning truck. Yeah, exactly. Um, even before the police, but she didn't identify herself oh, at the okay. time. But I'm not sure. Somehow, um, the police realized that it was her. Now they said that um, the companies that all these cars belong to, including Guangzhou Motor Group, mm. Galapapuk Company. We Auto, ST Auto, as well as Born to, Born to Run mm. company. So right now, the DSIs are calling in all these companies to um, probably verify themselves. Submit the, all the documents necessarily. You know, but if you buy your car um, according to right process, procedure, have all the paperwork, just be proud to use it like our Deputy Prime Minister. He apparently... What did he do? Dro went to um, the government house yesterday, mm -hmm. driving Rolls Royce, and he actually just said to the media, I, I bought it right uh, legally, I have all the documents, so that's why I'm proudly drive it to work. Which is good, I Which think he just set example. Yeah. Right? Which is As good. As a politician, I mean, if you have it, own up to it. I mean, Not what's the point of showcasing yeah. it, right? <laughs> like, you want to tell the world, I got this supercar. And even though the traffic here is just so bad that I don't think you can drive that fast. Yeah, still, and there's a lot it looks of nice. And there's a lot of bumper around town. The road surface is not always mm -hmm. that great, so I think. And if there's a flood, then you're pretty much done because your car is so <laughs> yeah. low. So driving supercar in Bangkok, I don't know if it can be a joy ride unless you drive on this expressway or tollway. Well, it's turning heads, that's for sure. Yes. Now, uh, moving on to another news very quickly here, I'll give you an update on the peace talk because okay. we talked about that before, about how they have the third round of peace talks. It's concluded already. Very unfortunately, um, they didn't disclose because uh, too much information, 
I'm I'm pretty sure it's for whatever reason. Too much reasons. sensitive. Yeah, information, because probably. the thing is, um, it's concluded saying that um, at this point, uh, the Thai authorities accepted that there would be five um, issues that people, uh, the BRN, were requesting for. Mm -hmm. So five requests, but we don't know what are those at this point. Um, and plus, the BRN said that they will kind of uh, quiet down during the Ramadan period. That's good. That's pretty at much the conclusion. That, 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 that sounds you know, better. That's and it took them seven hours to talk over this. Obviously, there are a lot much more sensitive information mm -hmm. because it's seven hours. It cannot be just that. Yes. But uh, apparently, they don't really want the public to know. But like Hun Chen said yesterday, mm -hmm. at least this time they have done it. Uh, in, uh, and public knows about yeah, it. They true. have done it publicly. Mm -hmm. So uh, everybody hope for uh, at least a little better solution or better outcome out of this mm -hmm. and promise to be more peaceful during the Ramadan, I think is a good sign. Right, and this is at the Intercontinental Hotel in Kuala Lumpur, like I, like I said. And because the Malaysian were the mediator mm -hmm. for this particular um, talks. Now they say that they already set a date for the fourth round. Okay. And that would be on the 8th and the 9th of August. That's a good sign. Yes. It, it sounds like it's moving along finally. Mm -hmm. Which is really necessary. Yes, which is something that should happen a long while ago and uh, hopefully there will be a lot of good things come out of this. Mm -hmm. um, I think for this break, we don't really have much time left. Maybe yeah, we, we, we can move the, the rice pledging scheme okay. thing to the next break. And um, we also have the updates on the situation about the flood down south as well. So we'll take a short break and mm -hmm. we'll come back with more and more news to talk about. Don't go anywhere.